Hey everyone, and welcome back to Game Talk Radio. I'm Greg, and in this video, I'm going to go over my impressions of the Nintendo E3 presentation. So they do things a little bit differently. So Nintendo, quite a few, uh, a couple years ago, decided that I don't know, they just don't want to like rent out a hall and have all this crazy stuff. They do what they call Nintendo Directs, and they do these very um, shorter but more controlled, I guess you would say, uh, presentations. But they're also more produced, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So they don't have like this big live stage presence or anything like that. They just have like a, a pre-recorded thing. They bring in some guests, like Reggie, of course, is there, the head of Nintendo of America, and then they bring in some of the big guys from other ones, and they're integrated into the show itself. And it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, Nintendo does a really good job with these, though, and I like it because sometimes they can do a shorter, smaller, focused one. So sometimes they'll say, oh, we're going to do a Nintendo Direct based on Pokemon today, and all they'll do is talk about Pokemon uh, or something like that. Well, for E3, obviously, they go a little bit bigger because they are trying to make an impression, and they uh, so they do kind of the same thing, and this one's no different, so we're going to talk a little bit about it today. Uh, I actually thought it was pretty good. It, it starts off with, with Reggie fils so he's the, like I said, he's the president of Nintendo of America. And he, you know, he's kind of talking about how, you know, hey, the Switch is our new thing, obviously, you know, and they're everything that's, you know, coming out for the Switch. And they open with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is a very cool game. I, I, I was okay on the first one. I actually don't particularly, like, I didn't finish it. I didn't think it was amazing or anything, but I know it means a lot to a lot of people. And that was really cool. And then they kind of started talking about, uh, like, they just started hitting the home runs with the classic franchise that Nintendo is known for. So they introduce a new Kirby game, which what I'm really starting to like about what Nintendo's doing on the Switch here is they seem to understand what they are. And what the Switch is, is a four-player, like, port machine. And I don't say that necessarily in a bad way. What I, what I mean by that, and I don't mean port like, I mean like four ports, four players, not like port as in bringing an old game to it. But there's this... The N64 knew what it was. The N64 knew that it was a four-player co-op machine, and so almost every game that came out, they were integrating a four-player feature into it because they just they knew why people were buying it. I feel like Nintendo has the same sort of understanding of the Switch. They know why people are buying this thing, and so almost every game is starting to integrate other like four player into it so they showed off the kirby game and it clearly shows like up to four players can now play a kirby game and besides that they're not making this like crazy weird antics or anything <clears throat> excuse me they're not doing any crazy weird antics or anything they're just like hey it's a side-scrolling kirby game you suck up enemies you absorb their power and you go through a level that's really basic stuff but that's what makes kirby great so they kind of deconstructed it back to what made it great and now they're allowing for the four player element which is really really smart i think in their opinion or in my opinion, not in their opinion. Who cares what their opinion is? It's my opinion. Besides that, they also then later, and again, this isn't necessarily in the order that it happened. This is kind of my order of remembering it. After that, they also talked about a new Yoshi game. And again, it looked kind of like a 2D platformer. It looks like there's going to be multiplayer in that as well. Like they didn't, it's really hard to tell for sure, but I'm, I'm almost positive it wasn't a computer controlled person that was moving the other colored Yoshi. And this I thought was kind of interesting because this, this played off of the old Super Paper Mario for the Wii, where, like, you could, in that game, you could turn the camera to, like, be looking straight down, or you could turn it to the side, and it was kind of playing off of that 3D slash 2D element. Well, this game kind of does the same thing. Like, you can flip. It's, it's like, everything's made out of cardboard, essentially, it looks like. And you can flip the screen, and then when you flip it, you're kind of still standing where you were, but now you have a different objective, in, or a, a different perspective, I should say. And you can kind of see everything... It differently it's very very cool and so I, I like what they're doing there nintendo's smart they're hitting us with their franchises they know what people want they know what people like and a lot of this stuff is coming early next year or late this year so then they kind of show a little mini super baby teaser they don't even talk about when it's coming out so it may not even be next year i would hope it'll be next holiday but all of a sudden out of nowhere they announce metroid prime 4 that's pretty huge again i'm not a big metroid prime guy but i'm not too ignorant to admit but a lot of people obviously love that series and love that franchise. I love the Metroid franchise, just not the not the Prime series personally. And so that's really big news for a lot of those people that like Metroid. I mean, a new Metroid Prime, and we haven't had one since the original Wii, and that was that was a long time ago. So congratulations on Nintendo and not abandoning the Metroid franchise, which a lot of us hold really, really dear to our hearts. Uh, so then they, they go into... They showed a lot of, and this is actually what they ended with, but they also showed a lot of Super Mario Odyssey, which is their big heavy hitter for holiday this year. It's actually coming out at the end of October, 
and Mario Odyssey looks amazing. So in all the earlier footage, it kind of showed that you had this hat, and you would throw your hat, and like that was a, a key component of the game. Well, we know a lot more now from watching this trailer that when you throw the hat and it lands on an enemy, you actually essentially become that enemy. So it's almost got like an aspect of Kirby to it, where you're kind of mind you're taking over the powers of another, like and uh, of an enemy, and, and that was pretty cool too. So I'm I'm looking at that and I go, man, Mario Odyssey I think is going to be excellent. I think Yoshi and Kirby have potential to be excellent, and Xenoblade Chronicles too. I I'm I'm very happy to see Japanese RPGs coming to the system. Even though I personally don't really care that much about that game, it's good to see because if it sells well, if it sells well, then we'll get more, and they'll make maybe more games that I might like. Uh, then they kind of started talking a little bit of Pokemon, which I'm not, I'm not a Pokemon guy, but they started talking about it, and then now it's how you know Pokemon tournaments coming to the Switch, which we already knew that that announcement came out during the Pokemon um, Direct a few uh, like a week ago, but then they have like a special announcement, and I don't know if this was to like. This is interesting to me because I don't know if this was actually something to quell some of the rumor mill that was going on, but, you know, last week when they announced Pokémon Tournament for the Switch, everyone got kind of disappointed because they announced Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for the 3DS. So, again, the, the handheld, the 3DS, was getting the core Pokémon game, and the Switch was just getting the fight a, a, a port of Pokémon Tournament from the Wii U. Well, they came out here and they basically said, oh, we're making a core Pokémon game for the Switch. It's coming. And you're like, whoa, okay, that's a pretty big deal. And that's, again, that's fantastic news. So I'm very glad they're working on that. Then they kind of, they, they walked into some uh, Fire Emblem stuff, which I just sounds crazy, but like I'm not a Fire Emblem guy either. Like a lot of these Nintendo franchises I'm not really into, but I kind of respect the, I respect the um, 3DS versions of uh, what they are. They're like, you know, tactical turn-based RPGs as opposed to um, showing off some of the other ones that are like, you know, like a, a Fire Emblem Warriors and stuff, which is kind of more like a Dynasty Warriors type. Like, I don't really care much about that. But I do care, I do think, and I would very much like to play, like, a legit Fire Emblem game on the Switch that's a traditional core, you know, a core-style core game. Uh, and so that looked really good. And then they, they, they started talking a little bit about, and again, this might not even be the right order. I just, I watched it, and I'm kind of regurgitating what I saw and how I felt when I saw it. And then they kind of went into the... Uh, DLC for the new Legend of Zelda game. So they didn't really touch on a lot of what it's about, but they showed some cool stuff. And you're like, okay, cool. Uh, but what they showed, which I really, really liked, was they show uh, they showed some new Amiibo that are going to be coming out for the DLC, which at first you're kind of like, whoa, they're making Amiibo for a DLC? But yes, they're making Amiibo for a DLC, but the Amiibo are of the Four Guardians, and it looks really cool. And they look really well done, like they always are. And so that was, you know, that was kind of a neat take on or I don't know, like, Nintendo did pretty good with this one. They they talked about some new stuff, not none of which I guess were really a surprise. Like, that's the only problem. Nintendo has this working against them, I think, is we know as consumers of certain games they're always going to make. Like, they're going to make a Kirby game. They're going to make a Yoshi game. They're going to make a Mario game. But it was really neat seeing Metroid Prime 4. And they didn't show it in the initial presentation, but later on the Treehouse, they showed, which is... a a treehouse live is kind of what Nintendo does for like other live events they're doing streaming and stuff like that. And then the treehouse they announced that they're remaking Metroid 2 Return of Samus. And it's called like I think it's called Metroid Samus's Return or something like that. And so it's a remake of Metroid 2. And it's a 2D Metroid. Like oh my god, we've only been waiting how many freaking years for this thing to come out. My only concern with that is, and I didn't realize this when I was watching it, because it does look pretty good, but my only concern initially is it's being made by Mercury Steam. And they did, which which they're mostly known for Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which I really, really enjoyed the first one and kind of enjoyed the second one. But they're also responsible for Castlevania on the 3DS, which was uh, Mirrors of Fate, which was uh, what, what you call like a 2.5D. So it's a 2D side-scroller, but it's with 3D character models and stuff. But those that game, in my opinion, was garbage. Like their their version of like a two D game, I did not like it. But I'm very curious to see what Mercury Stream does with this. And watching some of the gameplay I watched, like it was awesome. You have a bunch of different weapon types. One of the enemies was on the ceiling. It was like a boss fight, and the girl playing like she shot like a grapple beam. It locked onto the enemy, and she had to do something to like pull it down to the ground, and then it stunned the enemy, and she could hit it with with rockets and stuff. So there was some really cool dynamics to the combat. There was even some like um, interactive cutscenes and some stuff like that. 
So it was it was very cool. Uh, which they, te like I said, they didn't technically announce it. They announced it later at the, at the treehouse, but that was very cool. Um, one game that's kind of creeping in, like, as an unknown, and, and I'm always going to be honest, and I hate, I hate to do this because he's going to rub it right in my face, but one of the guys I do the Have At You podcast with Jordan, we were looking at the new Mario Cross Rabbids game, which is like a, uh, it's supposed to be like an RPG with Mario and the Rabbids, and it looked... At first glance, it looks totally stupid. Like, I, I don't understand why the game's even being made. I'm getting kind of frustrated. I just think it's ridiculous. And Jordan just won't shut up about it. He just thinks it's his game of the show. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, I can't I can't handle this, right? But now as I see more about it, the game itself looks pretty cool. It, it really looks like a tactical, turn-based, like, shooter almost. Like So, like, yeah, you're, you're a rabbit and you're Mario, but, like, you're taking cover like an X, basically like XCOM. And unfortunately, if you say anything's like XCOM, I'm probably going to buy it because it's one of my favorite games ever. So it's another one of those games that you just feel like, why is this here? Why is this out? No one really wants this. But that's not true. People do want it. And I think it's going to be really fun. I guess my initial reaction was the Rabbids, to me, are kind of toast. Like, like they kind of wore out their welcome. They really milked the the Rabbids, which are like... um. If you ever if you ever played on there was a game called Rayman Raving Rabbids and it was like a collection of mini games on the Wii, and they were cute like they're funny and there was some really good commercials and stuff at the time but just felt like they got overplayed. And so to see them reintroduced like this, I'm like, man, this is just so stupid. Why are they coming back now? And I don't know why they decided to use them in this property because Nintendo could have just made this game that anyway that way, even though it's I believe internally developed at Ubisoft. Uh, but yeah, it's. It looks stupid, but it's it's probably gonna be really really fun. So I'll stop bashing it, Jordan. I'm taking. Just go ahead and you, if you, if you listen to this, you can just blast me for it. I know you will, and that's okay. I am. I will happily eat crow when it uh, when it is my turn. But it it does look pretty good, and you were right, and I was wrong. So, uh, but overall, the Nintendo press conference was pretty good. I I, I feel like they're about the same level as Sony, where <laughs> right now. I guess the difference being is I didn't have as high expectations as Nintendo as I did for Sony. So you could argue that Nintendo did a good job because they had low expectations going in and then they hit and exceeded those expectations. As opposed to Sony, in my opinion anyway, I went in with, with the expectation they were just going to wow us like they do every single year and they didn't wow us this year. But I think all in all, when I pull back, both conferences were really good and the stuff they talked about was really good stuff both had new things that they wanted to show us both had a good healthy mixture of old stuff they wanted to show more of and i think it was really good so not that it's really unexpected but i think sony and nintendo right now have really like cemented the fact that they're they're the ones to take down like they're in, in every three-way race there's always like the two top competitors and there's always one person lagging behind and i, I think it's very clear this generation that the xbox is the one lagging behind as to where, like, right now, it's like, get on with Nintendo or get on with Sony and then figure out the rest later. But all in all, I really liked it. That It was entertaining to watch. They always are. And they kept it kind of short and sweet. They didn't drag it out. It wasn't an hour and a half, two hours long. It was just straight up a half hour plus the Treehouse stuff was is kind of going on all day, actually. And uh, But there's a lot of really cool stuff to watch. It's neat how they can stream it all now. So, like, there's just... Like 12 hours a day, they've got content coming at you where they've got developer stuff. And I was just watching, this isn't related to the Nintendo one, but I was watching some developer Q&A about God of War. And it was just so cool to like watch like a panel talk about development of the game, you know? And that's something that we get this kind of access we normally don't have access to. But anyway, uh, again, if, if you didn't watch a Sony video yet, I don't do ratings uh, and grades because that's just, it, it, to me, it's just asinine. Like, what's the difference between an A minus and a B plus? Like, who cares? But what I will tell you is that Nintendo did a good job and it shows a lot of promise. The The Pokemon game coming, the core Pokemon game coming to the Switch is very important because there was a turning point for the Switch where if they just kept getting these Wii U, um, like, you know, ports, I don't want to say ports in a negative way, but like as a extended ports where they're like better versions of it. If they kept getting that, but then the 3DS kept getting the killer software, then that was going to hinder the Switch's success. Now, I will admit as salt, I am very salty about this, but that Metroid uh, game that I want to play, the Return of Samus, the Metroid 2 remake, is only on 3DS. And I'm just like, ah, like, like why, you know, like just make it for the Switch. It can't be that hard to go back and forth between the two, you know. But it is what it is. 
can't help it. Uh, Nintendo did good. Sony did good. And it was an entertaining E3, but I will echo the sentiment I said on the Sony video, which is I believe that this E3 compared to others has had a lot less... It's a lot less flashy. There's a lot less like magical secret stuff, but it's still full of great content and still full of great games. And it just proves that every year seems to be getting better and better when it comes to quality game content. So as always, you guys can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Game Trade Greg or at Bros Insanity, B-R-O-S-I-N-S-A-N-I-T-Y. If you look me up at Bros Insanity, I'm Drop Rate Greg. Because not only do I do Game Talk Radio, but I'm also part of a podcast on The Drop Rate, which is our other YouTube channel, which we put a lot of content up there. We have a bunch of guys doing some really cool stuff there. And, of course, we do the Have At You podcast, uh, which is just kind of our after-hours podcast. So, like, a lot of the stuff that goes up on Game Talk Radio, I try to keep PG because I want everyone to be able to appreciate it and understand the, what I'm trying to say. On the Have At You podcast, though, we get a little – I get to unleash a little bit. And so I take the store uh, language filter off, and I – totally just kind of let everything ride so it's kind of a fun time if you guys look it up it's on itunes um i'd love you to check out my podcast on itunes as well but anyway didn't want to turn this into a 20 minute advertisement for my stuff but as always i appreciate you all listening and watching our video and you all have a great day